you've, uh, if you've been to Tuesday Funk before, you know that the hosts uh, read little things too, because since we have you here, we have to use what we have. Um, and because we have a slightly shorter show tonight, we had one person cancel at the last minute. It's really good that I have something extra here. I'll read really slowly. Um, I won't do that to you, sorry. Um, I write short micro essays uh, to get in the habit of telling personal stories about myself, which is very hard for me. So <clears throat> this is semi, semi-personal, semi not Americans have a problem with money. According to a recent survey by the Federal Reserve, almost half of us could not scrounge up $400 cash in an emergency. Now you might say that most of these people live in poverty, that this is a consequence of America's fucked up, racist, classist system, and you would be right. But you should also know that this survey included people who make over $100,000 a year. 20% of them couldn't find $400 either. Because of my skin color, my upbringing, my elite college degree, my orthodontia enhanced teeth, <laughs> and a thousand other things that make up the unspoken rules of the American class system, I am and have always been upper middle class. How this relates to actual financial status is much more confusing. In my life, I have had tens of thousands of dollars in debt and not the wealth building kind. I have lived paycheck to paycheck. I have made more money than I know what to do with. I have been down to my last dollar. I have hoarded money and practically starved myself in the process. I have never known how to invest. I have worked for Wall Street. I have hated capitalism. I have benefited from it. I have never understood it. After years of therapy, after muscling through humiliation and anguish to figure out who I am and why, I still cringe when I talk about money. It is tied to some of my worst childhood memories, my worst thoughts about myself. For years, I would literally cross my eyes while pulling money out of an ATM so that I would not be able to read my balance. <laughs> it's true. I have to stop myself from doing this now. <clears throat> It is a dangerous habit for someone who made near minimum wage, who came from an upper middle class family, like I said, that was nevertheless always in the midst of financial disaster. It was a defining horror of my childhood to realize the brittle farce of my parents' financial stability. Show me someone who thinks clearly about money, who understands their own financial situation and handles it in a thoughtful, balanced way. Someone who does not experience some kind of emotion every time they buy something. Do you self-soothe by spending? Do you punish yourself by hoarding? How closely is your sense of self-worth tied to your bank account? I got tired of being afraid, and so I started to educate myself. And I'm here right now to tell you the secret to financial health <laughs> <laughs> for people of any income. It is a four-step process to be taken at your own pace. So simple, it could almost be a haiku. <laughs> Number one, make a budget. Number two, pay down your debt. Number three, save as much as you possibly can. They tell you 10%, don't believe it. Save as much as you possibly can. Invest in low-fee index funds. In other words, make your money, make money. The rest is just details. It's not very sexy unless you find simplicity sexy, which I do. <laughs> Our financial system serves those who have the knowledge to exploit it. Thus, the industry has done everything in its power to keep you from knowing how simple it is. They have created their own abstruse vocabulary, their army of thieves. They serve their Trump overlords and to hell with everyone else. But you can understand and exploit it too, without their help. And you should, because it will help you heal, and because you can only change what you understand. Thank you.